Well, here I am in the cruise in Leslie's garden, and she asked me if I'd like to do a painting in her garden of a scene that she'd like, which I said, look at a couple. Some of them are d difficult to paint because the flowers are one side, or really I'm hoping that in the future she'll set up some islands of flowers so we can get around more, uh, or in within. Um, the roses would have been nice behind us, this year haven't really come to anything, but I'm going to use them in the background today. It was either after going very close. We've got the walnut tree here, we've got the lawns behind. What's attracted me today, apart from this being under the shade, is that we've got a lovely pattern here on the ground, which would be a nice foreground to lead into the colours behind. So I'm going to do an acrylic. I was going to start the oils, but I've only got a month left in France now, so I don't want to set up oils really. And tomorrow I'm hoping to do a great big one on plein air down by the stream, we'll see. I'm going to just standard technique onto a canvas here, whack in the backgrounds, whack in all the middle tones, put in the darks and work up the highlights at the end, best I can with these acrylics. And Leslie's sitting behind. And the view we're going to do is from here up to here, probably across to here, down there and round here. So we're going to take in that lot there. I've got my mixing palette today, but I'm just going to have to use the lid of the wet, stay wet palette. Right, my usual set of brushes. I'm going to start off with a little brown brush, uh, this one, and just use some blue to draw out. Can't be asked with a pencil today. I'm just going to mix up a little bit of ultramarine and do a very rapid drawing with that. Just thin it down a bit. Now, what am I going to get in then? Let's have a look. That's quite nice. Uh, Yes, it's um, taking a fair amount in, and that's about halfway down the composition. And it's then divided into the thingy. So we already see the composition coming here, and just where I want things now. That's the rose arbor the area there of roses. Down to here, we've got that space in between here. I might make that tree a little bit narrower. Remember that we can be, we can use other famous artist techniques in this. I mean, Constable's Haywain, for instance, if you look at the actual scene, which still exists uh, down at the mill, Blackford Mill, um, he's moved trees 30, 30 yards, 30 feet. Some of the trees still there. Um, he wasn't worried. It's what happens in the picture that matters most. So can't rub things out, so I want to make things a bit, if I want to change something, then I'm going to do it by just defining it a little more, so it's a bit more obvious. But there's our basic composition. We're ready to paint. <coughs> right, we tend to start with our big brushes and work our way down. I like to start with the horizon, so I like to start with the top end of the sky here. Let's get that done. Start mixing some colour up. The colour's gone a bit mouldy on my painting and my stay wet palette, so I'm going to have to colours a bit, get them going. Why have they gone mouldy? Well, they are. They, the they must. Or what? No, they must have. Um, I got some cerulean here. They must have organic materials in the paints, I guess. They're not going to hang about. The painting has an impressionist, so we're going to paint an impression of this very, very quickly. I'm starting with some cobalt blue and white up there. Now you see the much cooler blue, the cerulean blue down here covering over that wrong bit of mark there straight away look and it just disappears. I want to block in and get rid of all of this white canvas as quickly as possible. Not easy with the light shining through it I can tell you. Right I want much more cerulean to it now. And they've got a little bit of yellow to my turquoise to get a much more green light colour back here. Looks like there's some beautiful colours happening now. So 
go straight to making lovely colours. I'm going to use a broken colour effect of one colour over another. I'm going to paint things over this. I'm only just painting in the blue in the background. I'm going to paint leaves over the top of it. You don't pussyfoot about. Get on, cover the canvas. Don't worry about details at this stage. Certainly not. I'm going to take some magenta into it now. Start to add a bit of pink into the sky. Higher up here as the atmosphere goes higher. And take that same pink, turning it more into a slight grey now, come down into here, where the clouds are, lower down. So it has a completely different effect here than it does here, because it's against a cooler blue. Now add a little bit more warmth to that. A very slight touch of brown. Give me a warm grey. Let's just start to get the underneath of some of these clouds. Like that light, this is cheap canvas and you can see the lights shining through spots of it there which I'm a bit annoyed about. Right, clean brush. I'm going to stay with one brush as long as I can before I have to move down and mix a little bit of yellow ochre and white and add that in with that earlier grey just feel do these clouds here tumbling over the surface just dragging paint across the surface right now I'm going to use a much cooler yellow a bit of lemon yellow Trying to get the sunshine going. Add more white into the same colour. Coming towards the end of doing our clouds. Just flicking the very lights of the clouds on top of here now. So much lovely colour there that we've really got to look for. Right, sky done. Let's get the background greys now. I'm going to take some ultramarine blue. A little touch of yellow ochre to be quite a warm background grey green. Not colours you'd expect to use at all, possibly, for the background. Well, there's a little bit of warmth in there, but they're softer. I'm going to put that against this sky straight away. There's very rapid waves of painting landscape. It's an impressionist. Doing the mid-tones first, not my darks, not my lights, these are the mid-tones. I want to go a bit darker. I've got to work fast because the light is going to change. And I want to get this done before it changes. Much cooler over here, this tree. Light against dark, rough against smooth, warm against cool is what I'm just about to start playing now. Leaving that tree out there behind feeling of these trees. So this is a nice little small study to get me loosened up before I plough into a much larger painting out there on plein air, hopefully in the next few days, we'll see. I'm making some mid greys with blue and brown at the moment. And somebody's clattering away behind me, chopping things <laughs> into my sound of my camera. Oh, that's one has to put up with this for the public around you, you know. <laughs> so we're just establishing our main tones. Another to another. Using the brush, broken ended, just trying to get some of the textures of the bushes and trees back here. The grasses. I'll add more colour to this as I go on. I haven't been timing myself on this, but it's probably been about 15 minutes so far. We want to do this within a, an hour or so if we can. Right, I'm going to change down brushes one now. I'm going to come down to this one. I go back to the larger one later, but just to do this bit here. Happy with that yet, but I've got to start working on some of these colours. 
in the background. Not catching the sunlight in the trees behind. Equally, if I do that, I've got to be able to go back and put that in my brush. Much warmer green, you'll notice, dark but warm green. Going in here, the foreground a bit more. Using a little crimson and ultramarine at the moment. I get some of these lovely darks into here. I get the feeling of the tree catching mottled light. Now let's go back to those greens. Shadows down here. We've got some nice cool greens amongst them as well as warmer greens. We're not painting every leaf, we're giving the effect of every leaf. I was telling somebody a tale recently about my visit to New Zealand many years ago and at the end of a, an exhibition day my friend who was looking after it was standing at the entrance as these visitors went out and uh, we'd like to ask how they how they've enjoyed it and so on. She said, oh, how did you enjoy the exhibition? I was standing just behind and they didn't realise. Oh, well, I don't know really. Uh, the paintings were just sort of um, daubs of paint. I suppose the Impressionists were originally called mere impressions and that's how they got the word Impressionist. That's how they were actually named. And I don't mind, I suppose, being called a daubist and start my own school of art because these are just daubs of paint. Right, these leaves get warmer here in the foreground, these yellow golden leaves that are coming here, which will draw it forward in the background here. So I'm adding a lot more yellow ochre in just down here to bring these leaves forward, and I'm going to make them much more yellow in just a minute because they're warmer than the background, and that'll bring them forward. When we look at scenes, you mustn't just look at one part. You have to look at the whole. Um, and see one green compared to another. It's not just uh, one green overall. Each and every one is different compared to each other. It's very easy when doing that with photographs because we tend to look at photographs very flatly and they don't have the variety of greens that it does in reality as I'm finding out here for instance right now. You see how that's brought that forward. Now if I take some bright yellow with that um, some chrome yellow for instance. I start to put that into here. We're going to start to get the effect of sunlight coming through here now with these much warmer greens. So we're playing these three things against each other still. The warm, the cool, the rough, the smooth, the light, the dark are playing through here as sunlight. In some ways it's nicer with oils because if I was doing this with oils now they'd be much much cleaner, much much purer colours going on. The acrylics tend to thin out a little bit, not quite as clean and pure. As the, as the oils are. The way that the light shines across the tree as well in places. To find these different colours rather than one to another, which is not that easy. The warms and the cools like here on the tree, the old lichen here. I've got to find these different colours to make it pull together how one colour comes through everything. We've got this blue-green coming through everything here. And there's that very warm... lichen in places there. Need to work on this down here a bit more, so get some of the greens going on down here. Shadows happening. Right, I want to start going back into the lights here now more. Just 
There's my big brush there, the base. The light's coming through the tree. We can now actually work into the trees with the light colours, giving the effect of light coming through the branches. Now that we've got those basics in, it's a very effective look. We can work into these little highlights that come down through the leaves here. As I say, oils don't sink as much. And that's one trouble with these acrylics. Whatever colours I put on, I've got to re-enhance afterwards because they tend to sink. So for instance, the lovely yellows on this tree that I did earlier are sunk right back again. I've got to go back in there again and work on them. You can see how we built up this effect of sunlight now. And to start getting a little brighter. You're able to see colour and you do learn to see more and more colour. The students so often say they can't see colours at first and then after a few lessons it starts to come. They'll see more and more and be more and more privileged in a way to see more than other people can in the world. Right, I've got the most of the basics done now. I need to come down to the smaller brushes still. So I'm going to come down to this one and start to put some details in because these colours are going to make such a difference here. Let's just start on these roses over here for instance. They're quite dark at first. I'm going to add white to them. The trouble is they are going to sink. I also need to get in some of these areas of I'm to focus in the background and then become more focus into the foreground. So I'm just going to start indicating some grasses here to lead our eye in. Does that look anything like back there, Leslie? I think it's looking absolutely wonderful. I can't get over the sky because when you started that, I couldn't see what the heck colours you were seeing there. <laughs> and that my goodness, where are you seeing those colours? I can't see them. So we work from our largest brushes down to our smallest brushes. Well, I would say I'm about done there. So it just falls to finish off. And you can see the view I was doing there behind it. That's it there. And there's our finished work. That was rather fun. I know Leslie enjoyed watching it. And it'll be a nice little present for her to remember. I won't it have a long I'm here. So just to loosen up with the brushes again. It's a little bit tight in places, a little bit photographic, but not still pushing the colours. Um, I do find that the acrylics sink a lot more, but I still think it's fun. I may prefer to actually work the oils over the acrylics with any major piece, but we'll see. <laughs> you watch, you watch it happening. What do you think as it happened? It, it was just stunning. It, um, I couldn't believe how what you were seeing there was coming on there. 
and the colours that you used, I, I just couldn't see them until it all of a sudden it happened. I can't describe it any better than that. But you enjoyed it? Oh, true, true, I did. And you're going to I like the painting it. now. How much you pay me for it? Was it um, 200, was it 300, 400, 500? Was it, how much was it? Oh, it was a gift, wasn't it? Oh, damn. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>